All right, guys, so this is a be a quick video on uh, the 1586. Um, yeah, I'm doing some maintenance to it. I just got done checking the air filter, blowing up the rad, greasing up the three point, except the lower links where it attaches to the back of the tractor because that needs to get tore apart because uh, I can't get grease to go through. So I need to uh, figure that out at some point, but the tires are so, are so far in there, it's hard to do anything, but managed to break those two bolts that were in there free. But after that, I don't know. I got to read up on the book a little bit more, I guess, but figured it out a little bit. But anyways, I always check my, uh, my wheel bearings or, well, the grease in them. I put a little bit more in there. Seems like they're, seems like it's pretty full yet. I just add a little bit to fresh stuff, but you're not going to be able to see it in this video, but it's the dumbest thing I've seen people do to a tractor yet. So right here is supposed to be a nut. I guess they call them a castle nut or whatever. You're supposed to be able to put like a, a some kind of a little pin through cotter pin or something. Okay, well, I know it's hard. It's gonna be hard to see it in the video, but cotter pins do not have a sharp point on them. You want to guess what that is? That is a nail, keeping the cotter or the castle nut from coming loose. I mean, how hard is it to go? through your you know through your stash if you even have a damn stash of parts and if you don't how hard is it to go to your local hardware hang store or whatever and just go and get a regular uh you know uh, pin put in there um i mean I, even i have some i don't know if they would fit or not but um yeah, they just put a nail in there. Yep. Oops. Isn't that just the stupidest fucking thing you've ever seen in your, your adult life? Now, mind you, I've owned this tractor for, what, six years now? And, yes, I've always known about that, but I've never, ever made a video about it. But... I'm sorry, but it's it's the dumbest redneck freaking cheapest thing you can do. Like that just proves to me that right there, this tractor belonged to like an old timer, and he was retiring because I I, I just I can't see anybody else doing that. I mean, if, if my friend saw that, he'd be like, "What the hell?" Because even had, even I don't think he would do that, and he's got a 1086. With way more hours than mine, and I know he's obviously rebuilt that so several times on, in his lifetime. <sighs> he's owned that 1086 since 2000, so you know, 22 years he's owned it. So but I don't know what the other side is like. This is just the the driver's side, but I'm not going to do anything with that because, well, I should, but. It's not broken because I can see it moving the head there, but um, I don't want to do anything with it right now because it's been holding up fine. But um, if if it needs new bearings or something in here at some point, then yeah, I'll do it all the correct way. I even need to order uh, new gaskets for this thing because they're leaking a little bit. So, but not gonna happen this is a and i guess whenever they last worked on this they put this cap on but it wasn't painted it was just a silver cap well i went ahead and painted it of course my paint jobs freaking coming undone so i have to throw a new layer of paint on i guess but could be just from moving it around too a little bit but yeah i'm gonna tear the other side apart i do this once a year just to make sure everything, because I know that when I first tore into this, I don't remember what side it was. It was either this side or the other side, but it was bone fucking dry. There was nothing, even no grease on it. 
the cap didn't even have grease in it. Like you're supposed to put grease in your caps. And then I always smear a little bit around here, hoping that it'll pull its way through to the outer, to the other bearings that are in there. Hopefully that's doing that. I don't know, but, um, but yeah, <clears throat> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, like, I mean, this truck has got a lot of problems, but you know, I'm slowly trying to fix them too, but it's these stupid redneck fixes that just kind of annoy the crap out of you. Like, I get that you're, you know, maybe you're in a hurry, you know, and you just need to get it done. But, you know, at least then at the end of the year, do it the proper way when you're not going to use the tractor anymore. Because obviously, I know this tractor sits all winter when the last owners used it because I don't know what the hell they're going to use it for. So, I mean, it's a pretty big tractor, 160 horse. It's probably been, been tuned up, you know, to push 180 who knows but you know you could at least you know attempt to fix it the right way at the at, you know at the end of the year you know if you don't have the proper you know pins to go in there or whatever um but whatever i just do this once a year i need to order some new gaskets for this thing because they are leaking a little bit but whatever so yeah check the tire pressure in them again uh this tire was super low uh about 16 pounds and i have them up to about 25 pounds i think i don't go past the maximum rating for these tires, which I have no clue what it was, but I do you think it would be here? But yeah, no. Well, that's just for setting the damn bead. So um, I don't know. I only put in about twenty-five. I think I put twenty-five in the front, twenty-four in the rear. I know one guy said to bump it up to thirty-five for thirty. Well, see, the thing is. To set those tires on the bead you need 35 psi so if you put it up to 30 you're pretty much maxing out you know what the tire is designed to really do i guess i don't really know that's what i feel comfortable doing so you think you'd want a little squat in the tires so that way you think it'd be a little more of a comfier ride but i don't know Road travel wise, I don't know, you probably would want them stiffer, I guess. I don't really know, but I just do whatever I feel comfortable doing with and 20, 24 in the rear and 25 in the front. That's about all I feel comfortable with doing. Unless it says someone here, it should say on here the proper, like, don't go past a certain PSI, but I've seen it one time, but I don't see it now. So I don't know. This is a Firestone. This tire and the other side is a American Farmer. And then that one's is, I think that one's a Firestone. And then that one over there is also a Firestone. That's the newer tire. This needs, this tire here needs to be replaced. And I think I need to replace the rim as well. I should just get it done and suck up the five grand and just, you know, go five grand to debt and because the valve stem on that tire has been welded in place too. And she don't look the healthiest anymore. So. And just throwing paint over it's not going to fix the problem. So. Yeah I'll bring you guys back. Uh, once I check the other side. I'm just going to put this all back together. I threw enough grease in there. I think that should be. She's well greased. It's better than not having any grease at all. Like the other side. It was one of these sides that didn't have a damn lick of grease in it. And I was always told to make sure there's grease on that and make sure there's grease in the cap too. And But to see a nail in there is mind-blowing. I guess it's not under any kind of tension or anything when even when the tractor's rolling. So I guess the nail works, but it's good. As a, it's a good temporary fix if you need to get out of the field and get into a building or something right away. But not a permanent solution. But... I could fix that myself, but I'm just going to leave it for now. 
it's been like that all these years and it hasn't done the damn thing so i'll just leave it for now and then i guess when this needs to be rebuilt at some point um i'll see if the my friend can do it the young guy will put all new bearings in there i guess or whatever he's probably got the proper equipment to jack the front end up and get the weight off these tires because i don't have that so should order it but uh cost me money too so I don't know, these, they seem all right yet, so, I don't know, but yeah, let me put this back together, and then I will see you guys on the other side, we'll see if she's gone dry or not yet, so, one second. All right, so we're on the other, the other side now, uh, this grease is pretty wore out, I just put some fresh stuff on top, I'm going to smear it around a little bit but you can tell this grease is getting kind of wore out and this seal is out it's stuck here right now but you can tell how dirty this this has been getting so i definitely need to order some new seals before winter um but there was i forgot to show you the old grease but there was some old grease in there and it wasn't really doing anything anymore so i just put some fresh stuff in and that should take care of that for the year so, but I'm going to smear that around and then maybe I'll add a tiny bit more. I don't know. We'll see how I feel, but yeah, I think this is the side that runs a little more drier. I think I'm not really sure why, but I don't know. Of course, I think it's leaking out though too. Like it comes out very slowly and then it dries and makes a crust up here on the top. So, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> This, I don't know if this was the one that was dry when I first opened them for the very first time. Because it looked awful clean inside. So it, so it was kind of like they just greased the bearings and then put everything back together and it just left this dry. And from what I'm told, you're not supposed to do that. You are supposed to put grease here and then put some in the cap. And that'll work itself around with time. So, well, that's what I did and that's what I'm going to keep doing anyway. So... But sometime this fall, I will order some new of these gaskets for both sides. And that should take care of that leaking problem. But for now, it's not an option because I didn't order any. So, yeah. <clears throat> but. So. But that's what that side looks like anyway. Like I said, I put some fresh stuff at the top here. But I'm going to smear that around. And maybe I'll add a little bit more. And then uh, put it back together. And then. The last thing I got to do, I got to clean the windows because they haven't been cleaned in like two years. I need to clean my hands first, but other than that, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to change the oil on this tractor because I don't put enough engine hours on to justify changing oil every year. It was definitely due last year, so ever since I did it, I think she's been happier and I don't think she rolls that much. I don't think she makes much. I mean, she still makes a little bit of blow by, but honestly, I feel like it's not as much now, but I don't know. Could just be my crazy eyes, I guess, thinking that, but yeah, I just got done hearing the pastures too, uh, where all the cow poo's at to get, to get that job, get to get that job done so we could move on to bigger and better things. So yeah. So other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and button this thing back up, and then uh, I'm, going to, I'm calling it job done then. Uh, all that's left to do is to clean the windows, and then I, I got to put my dates back on the filters again. Looks like they're wearing off. 9-21 of 2021 is when I changed the engine oil. 8-3-21 uh, was when I did the antifreeze filter. And I think I did the fuel filters on the same day, I think, as the engine oil. So, uh, no, I think I did that. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember. I have to go look again. But, yeah. Ever since then, she's been happier. And, yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. I just want to let you guys know what was going on here. And, uh, yeah, this is fun, fun maintenance for a tractor. 
this isn't, isn't even half of the bullshit you got to deal with, but <sighs> whatever. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to take off. So, I guess I have a good day and stuff. Stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.